Hi everyone, Kiel here. Today I want to make a quick video to talk about the data visualization portfolio. So if you don't know whether you need one or not or how to build one, this video is for you. I'm gonna drop some names here, the services that I use or that you may use, but I'm not being paid or affiliated with any of them. It's just uh, out of my heart, don't worry. So first question, first idea is why do you need a portfolio? Well, at first, first of all, it's a bit mandatory if you want to work as a freelancer in DataViz or even if you want people to appreciate uh, what you do and when you create some amazing visual, you, you need a portfolio. So you have different options, right? One could be to put your work on services like Tableau Public that you see here on the screen. And if you're not familiar with the, the DataViz like world, Tableau is the leading software in the DataViz community. So most people will actually put their uh, visuals on this website called tableaupublic.com or where it's basically like a social media, people can follow you, your profile, you can like, and you can share, which is pretty good. If you want to look for inspiration, definitely go there. Uh, sometimes you're, if you're more like an artist or designer, you would mostly put your work probably on Behance, the website that you see also on the screen. And uh, even if you're like an artist and doing drawings and like visual effects or some or other uh, artistic work, you would also maybe put your work, your work on ArtStation, which is another website. So if you, like me, you are both an artist and you're also a designer, a uh, database designer, you already have like two websites to put uh, your work out. So maybe now that you, you're very familiar with Tableau and you know, an illustrator, you do your database, you learn d3.js, you learn how to program in JavaScript. So naturally you would put your work on Observable. Observable is a notebook for JavaScript and it was like tailor-made for D3. It's created by the, actually by the creator of D3.js. So it's really made for this uh, library. You can put your work, interactive data viz online, and it's awesome. You have tons of different examples. You have the code below it. Once again, you have social profile, you can like, you can share. So now you have three or four different websites uh, to uh, like showcase your work. But now maybe you move on to you more in the data science part. So you you know you do some work in Python or R, and you want to share it and because you're you like me, you're a scientist, so you advocate for open science. You put your code on GitHub, you open source it. So now you have four or five different websites just to have your profile. So everything is scattered, and you have no single source of truth. So my recommendation would be better have to have your own website with explanations, with the sketches, the wireframes, and you can even link to all the different other websites if you wish. But at least you have everything is contained in one single place. It's also much better for um, Google because now when I type your name, if you can actually buy a domain name with your first name and last name, um, if it's not taken, then when you type your name, the first site that comes up would be yours and it's, it acts as a single source of truth for every project that you, you took, that you, that you make and in the future. You can also create an about page and link to all your social media, everything in one place. So it's not really expensive. Huh? To buy your own domain name, you can, you can actually buy it for 10 bucks per year for a .com. So it's, it's really cheap. And, but one mistake that people often make is that they, they, they want to put, they create a website and they have a, their name as a subdomain of a an, an host provider. For instance, one of the leading provider is Wix, Wix.com. And so what, what people do is first name, last name, dot Wix.com. It's not really good because now if you start to get popular, you create tons of content and now other websites are backlinking to your own uh, subdomain name of the Wix domain. So now if you want to uh, change the platform because maybe you need to in incorporate more 3D stuff, uh, you want a better video hosting platform or anything, then you're a bit stuck because you don't have the control over this subdomain and basically you have to pay forever uh, if you want to keep those backlinks and it's, it's not gonna be very good. So my recommendation would be having your own .com and then handling the redirection on your own, which is very simple. Even if you change the provider for your hosting services, everything's gonna work as, as before. So hopefully now you're convinced and you really want to have your portfolio out there. So what are your options? Well, basically, let me tell you a bit about myself. I tried everything. I have my website for more than 10 years now, 
And I started with the small PHP box. So I had my own only server that was actually serving my web, my, my name, kirelbenzi.com. And it was really not good because as you can imagine, you cannot really scale anything, right? Everything is like only one machine. If you have too many visits, it crashes. So the second option that I used uh, was a long, long time ago. It's much better now, but it was um, using static, static website generator. So if you're not familiar with this technology, basically you write your articles and have as a common file format, such as Markdown, for instance, and you compile your website and it creates tons of different HTML files that you can upload. And it's, it's very interesting because it can go really fast and you can serve like tons of interactive DDVs. It works perfectly well. The only issue that I have that I had uh, back in the day is that if you want to have people, you know, being a member of your website. So if you want to sell things, if you want people to log in and have an account on your website, you can't. So there is ways to bypass this thing, but you need to have several different services that offer basically a backend. So a server where you have a database where people can, you know, fetch their information from. And it was starting to get complicated. So I said, okay, let's change it. Let's use a WordPress, my own WordPress. So I was hosting WordPress is a, you can have a website on wordpress.com, but you can also download and install WordPress on your own. It's free and it's very good. It's one, actually 80% of all the websites in the world are using WordPress, so it, it's pretty good. So I started using WordPress for years. I changed the different templates and it was working great. The only big issue that I had with WordPress is that because it's so versatile, you have tons of different plugins and options to basically customize it the way you want. But I was really scared each time I wanted to up, you know, upgrade a plugin that the, the website will like crash. And it happened quite a few times, even if I had backup on the side. So it was, you know, it was always scared when in front of my computer, should I update? I need to update because it's, uh, uh, you have security issues. So I need to update, you update and everything crashes. So it's getting much better. Of course, if you have like very well-maintained plugins, it's not gonna happen. But you know, I was starting, I was worried that everything broke and it broke so many times that I said, okay, I need to change. So now I'm moving on to Webflow, which is the website that you see here, which is pretty good. It's not perfect, uh, but it, I would say this is, uh, you can redesign the website exactly as you want it, but you know, instead of having to code everything, you have like a more uh, user-friendly interface. But basically what it does is create, it creates CSS, uh, like code to uh, create your website for you. So you need to know uh, to, uh, how to do a website, uh, basically. So you need to do HTML, CSS to really understand how it works. So this is not what I would recommend if you're just getting started. So what about you now? Basically, you have two constraints. You have time on one hand and money on the other hand. Do you want to spend 100 hours building your web website from scratch? If so, please go ahead. It's going to be good for your front-end skills, so if you want to really uh, get deeper into this uh, area of programming. But if you're like me and you really want to focus more on things that you like to do, which is data art in my case or data viz, it's much easier to just go find a template that you like, you buy it uh, and you customize it just the way you want, but you know, not too much. And you really take care about putting content out rather than spending like 100 hours building the old different subtleties for your website to be responsive to work perfectly on mobile and things like this. So if I had to do a portfolio from scratch today, this is what I would do. I would just first find a domain name that I like, hopefully my first name and last name if it's available. Go on Squarespace, for instance. This is a, you can see on the screen, it's one of the top leading uh, website builder. You have Webspace, you have Wix, you choose the one you like. And go on the portfolio section, Take a template that I like, you can either pay for it or you take a free one, that doesn't really matter. Find the one that you like. Replace the images that, that they put by default with your own data viz. And when you would click on one image, you will actually open a dedicated web page. And this is where I would talk about the story behind the piece or behind the, the visual, uh, my process, everything that it is needed to know so that people from the outside, when they read my work, they understand more about me and how it was created. So this will take apparently like 10 minutes to do it it's very quickly. Even if you find your domain name, you can buy it directly from the, the website builder itself. So it's really fast. Hopefully you, now you have uh, no excuse if you want to uh, create your portfolio. 
Uh, let me know in a comment if you want me to basically go a bit deeper about how to build one and you know go on this uh, Squarespace for instance, create one from scratch and uploading some uh, different types of visualization such as images or interactive stuff. I can also break it down for you if it's uh, helpful. Just let me know in the comment. Otherwise, I hope that this video was informative and you are uh, that now you are quite motivated to do so. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.